change your life. Praise the Lord. I wasn't raised in church and my life changed when I called on that name. That name. Let's sing No Sweeter Name. Happy to be in church on a win, uh, uh, not Wednesday, Friday night. Praise God. Greet somebody and tell them I love the Lord Jesus. We'll be seated in His presence.
to God. Thank you, Lord. It's a sweet way to start out, isn't it? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, it's offering time. Time to stir up our faith. Uh, turn to Galatians chapter 6. We'll be looking at verse 9. I'm looking at the New American Standard Bible. Galatians 6, 9. How are y'all doing tonight? Happy faces, house full of faith, glory to God. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. Verse 10 says, So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those that are the household of faith. We need to be led in our sowing, amen? Amen. According to John 3.16, the chief expression of love is giving. And faith works by love. That's how it works. I was thinking of, of a good number of years back at this point, um, Lisa and I were living paycheck to paycheck, and we saved enough money to go out to an inexpensive Mexican restaurant. And so we, we sat down at the table, and, and the Lord prompted me, and I looked over, and my elders were sitting just a couple few tables down from us, and I noticed that, and uh, we're, we're getting ready to eat our food, and on the inside of me, that, that inside voice, I heard, uh, pay for their meal, and I kind of let that go, and I just kept eating, and kind of, I didn't say anything, and it, it come up again, pay for their meal, and it, it, it didn't go away, and I'm not enjoying the meal all that much, <laughs> and uh, it came up again, pay for their meal, and I said, I don't have the money. Not out loud, just on the inside, just between me and the I said, I don't have the money. He said, check your wallet. So I got my bill filled out and I looked. There's money to pay for my meal. There's an extra 20 in there. So much for that excuse. <laughs> so I sat there a while longer and didn't do anything. And they're eating their meal and we're about finished. And finally, finally, I, I called the uh, waiter. It wasn't our waiter. It was, they had a different waiter. And I called the waiter, got their attention, got them to come over to our table. I said, uh, you see those folks sitting right over there? She said, yeah. I said, I'd like to pay for their meal. She said, you can't. I thought, I got $20. I just had this. I, I can. I, I, and I, can't. I wasn't real happy to hear that. I said, no, no, really. I, I want to pay for their meal. She says, you can't. I said, why not? She said, they've already paid for their meal and yours. <laughs> it grieved me. It, it bothered me that I was slow enough that I missed God. I did. But God's merciful. I, I was slow to act, but he's kind. I, I repented of that, and I purposed in my heart, man, if we ever see them in a restaurant again, I'm going to buy their meal. I'm not going to wait five minutes to do it. And I, I got another chance. Glory to God. But why would you not give? Fear of running out. Fear that no more would come in. Fear that, boy, that's the last $20 bill I'll ever see. <laughs> what do we say in the offering prayer? We give this willingly. Gladly, freely, knowing that there's a lot more where this came in, right? right? Believe in the love. Believe that God will take care of you, especially when you're following His direction. Yes, right. The Lord's trying to get something to me. He's, he's trying to help me. He's trying to bless others, but He's trying to help me. He, he's trying to make me a bigger blessing so that I can bless more people. It's not just about the money. It's about the love. It's about the encouragement. It's about the respect that goes with it. You see, people are more important than money. And when you get attacked in your finances, you have that tendency to turn inward and to look inward and think about you. And yet God would have us thinking about other people. Trust him. God loves people. And as his children, we should be a blessing looking for a place to happen. Amen. <laughs> if you want to get involved in the... Uh, Offering today, raise your hand. If you're using cash or credit, you'll need an envelope. Our ushers will get you one of those. If you're making checks out, make them payable to FLC. That stands for Faith Life Church. And uh, text to giving's on your screen. If you're watching online, there's a button marked sewing. You can click on that. Thank you, Lord. Y'all a good looking bunch tonight. Showed up ready to give, smiles on your face. Glory to God. Well, you look ready. Lisa, if you'll bring our, our offering up here. It's time to pray. Y'all can stand up on your feet.
She didn't, she didn't want to come up here until y'all stood up. <laughs> Thanks, love. <laughs> Say this after me. Father God, Father God we, come to you we come to you in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. bringing our tithes and offerings, our tithes and offerings. willingly, willingly. Gladly, gladly, freely, freely. Knowing, knowing there's a lot more where this came from. Thank you that you're our good shepherd. Because of you, we never lack. We never run out. We never miss out on anything good because of your mercy. Thank you for increasing us more and more, us and our children. In Jesus' name, amen. What's going on in the Faith Life family? We're getting our buildings, our lands, our houses, our vehicles, our equipments. It's happening. It's happening. Even in this year, right? Yes. Yeah. What else? All of our debts are being reduced and eliminated. Glory to God. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you for that. <laughs> the third thing. God is bringing into our hands seed, even some great, big, whopper, chunk seeds. And when we get it, we know what to do with it, right? We sow it where, where he tells us without waiting and without delaying. <laughs> Glory to God, you may be seated. Ushers, wait on the people. quit before I was ready. <laughs> but he is Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You know, I was reminded this past week of some things that were going on last year or a little more than a year ago this time. And uh, we were doing a lot of things and we got a lot of things to be thankful for. You know, there's a lot of people here, me in this crowd watching my internet that overcame some things this past year, came through some things. God sustained us in so many areas, healed our bodies. Glory to God, right? Met us in our finances, prospered us in spite of everything that was going on. Amen. We serve an amazing good father. And we should not take one thing for granted, but spend time thanking him for all these good things. Let's just thank him. Father, we do. We are so thankful for every person in this building in Sarasota watching my internet that you healed their bodies, Lord, that you saved their families, that you, you pulled them through a rough patch, that you, you've kept them to this present day, Lord. You've brought us through with your goodness. We thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we're so thankful, Lord. Thankful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Well, Father, we do. We, we pray over the rest of this service, Lord, that, that you'd have your way, Lord, that it be your plan 
your word that goes forth tonight, Lord, not, not my plan, not my ideas, not the ideas of man, but the very truth of the word of God, the truth that makes free, that heals our bodies, that keeps us. Lord, we ask for your help in every way in this service tonight. And we purpose by faith to be good hearers and excellent doers of everything that we hear tonight. And we praise you in advance for every good thing that you've done for us and that you're doing for us and will continue to do. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Glory to God. You know why a lot of people are, you know, actually, you know why everyone's still here? You didn't quit. You didn't quit. You know, when, when people of God, when Christians, men and women of God, refuse to quit, they come through. They come through. If you're still coming through, refuse to quit. The key to your salvation is refuse to quit. And I'm not talking about going to heaven or being saved. I'm talking about coming all the way through, experiencing the goodness of God in everything He's doing for you. He, he's got a good plan. He's got a plan to bring you out on the other side of this whole thing, whatever you're dealing with, better than before. Amen? Amen. You know, we got that word last year, early last year, maybe the late in the year before, that things will be better than before. Amen? And don't let go of that. Even if it's gooder than it was, let it be gooder. Right. Amen? Amen? Because when we don't quit, when we press into the things of God, we receive the goodness of God. There, there's no way around it. If you don't quit, you will receive. Amen? Glory to God. Which is kind of part of the message, but not all about. Open your Bibles to 2 Timothy 1, verse 6. Let's stir ourselves up. Amen? Amen. You know, so many times the things that we are doing in our life, um, we've forgotten and we just need to, we just need a kickstart, right? So sometimes you're thinking, how did I get here? Well, you just need a kickstart, right? Sometimes we just need to remember what we haven't been doing or what, what, what we haven't let happen in our life or how we're not excited about the things of God that we used to be excited about. Sometimes, you know, we, we think that contentment is complacency. Complacency will keep you where you're at. Contentment will press you forward. Godliness with contentment is gain. It's not settling. It's gain. Amen? And, and so to have godliness with contentment, you should be moving forward, not backwards. How many know God is never moving backwards? And if we're not moving with him, then he's getting further away from us. Amen? And we don't want him to get further away from us. We want, him to, get, we want to get closer to him. Amen? Second Peter, or Second Timothy 1 says, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting out of my hands. And, and you know, that gift, every person has a gift in them. Every person has the, the, the power of God in them. They have the love of God in them. They have the sound mind. The very next verse is what... Is he starts talking about that. We, he, he hasn't given us a spirit of timidity. He hasn't given us a spirit that quits, that backs off. We are not drawbackers. Huh? In, any drawbackedness that tries to get in us, that, that's, there's your word for the night. No drawbackedness. Right? We don't have any drawbackedness in us. No, tent, no timidity. We press in when we know it's the things of God. We push forward when we know it's the things of God. And we look forward when we know it's the things of God. Amen? And, and when, when, sometimes we've got to stir ourselves up because you can, you can think, well, yeah, you know, God's good. Yeah, God's good. No, God's good. Yes. Amen? Yes. If you wake up one day and say, oh, God's good, no, then stop yourself and say, wait, I didn't say that nearly right enough. God is good. Amen? And he's doing good things. And, and sometimes, you know, people say, well, I look stupid doing that. Go ahead and look stupid because you're going to do stupid if you don't look stupid right there. Amen? Because when we don't acknowledge 
and stir ourselves up in the things of God, stir our faith up, stir our gift up, then we begin to go backwards. We begin to draw back. Remember what he says, the just shall live by faith, right? And then he says, and I'll have no pleasure in those who draw back. Why? Because you can't get to him drawing back. He wants us as close to him as we can get. And the way to do that is always be following. Be following in the same way and be pursuing the goodness of God. Amen? Because there's, there's two following. You know, um, God told the rich young ruler, he said, he said, you lack one thing. Actually, he didn't say you lack one thing. The rich, run, the rich young ruler, after he, he said what he did, you know, he, he followed all the commandments. Well, let's just read it. There's no reason to do that. Let's just look at it. Well, Matthew 19. Matthew 19, verse uh, starting 16. You know, he runs up and he says, Master, good, good Master. What good thing shall I do? In other words, what kind of works can I do to inherit the kingdom of God, to inherit eternal life? And uh, Jesus said, first of all, why you call me good? Because he knows you must know more than you're letting on because you actually called me good. Amen. He says, there's none good but one, that is God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. And then he, then he goes through a few, he said, which, which Jesus said, thou shalt not do, thou shalt do, let's just go with, not King James English. Don't kill anybody. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. Man, the guy was happy. Why? He'd done all these since he was a little kid. He'd done all these. But yet he knew in his heart. Yeah, how many always know when you're when you when you got when you're missing something? You know, like like, like when Mrs. Moore comes to say that says, "Did you do this?" and you say, "Yeah," but you know that she knows you didn't do it the way you were supposed to do it, right? So you should have said, "Well, kind of." I need to go back on this. And this, he, he's getting ready to ask a question that he already knows the answer to because he wouldn't have asked it had he not known. He said, what do I lack still? And Jesus said, since you ask, if you want to be perfect, what's he saying? If you want to be complete, if you want to feel like you're not lacking anything anymore, he said, go, sell what you have, give to the poor, you shall have treasures in heaven and come follow me. What's he saying? He said, I want you to go all in. If you want to be complete, and see, that's where, that's where people will start drawing back. When you say, when you, when you tell them, hey, here's the, here's the way out. Liquidate. <laughs> Get rid of what's in my place and put me back there. It's not always about money. Some people have no attachment to money, but they got a serious attachment to their family. I couldn't go there because my family's over here. You could go anywhere God tells you to if God tells you to. Right? He'll take care of your family. Amen? Some people got attachment to their job. Right? Some people think follow me means come to church on Sunday. They ought to sing the song, I have decided to come to church on Sunday. <laughs> right? I have decided to read my Bible once a week. What are they doing? They're doing what he did. Thou shalt. <laughs> I read my Bible. Then he'll have a whole list. I sat in the front row. Right? I read my Bible. I smiled at people at church. <laughs> right? Because everything becomes about church at that point. That's not following God. Following God is a daily walk, right? Going, and literally in this, in this verse, it means to accompany. Accompany me. Jesus said, accompany me. What, what a high honor right there, huh? Accompany me. Glory to God. But he couldn't. Why? Because he only heard the first part of the sentence that said liquidate. And how many knows, he, if, he'd, if he'd have took all that money, if he'd have sold everything, he'd have had plenty. Right? 
He didn't say give it all to the poor. He said give to the poor. Why? He said, I want you to act in love. That, that's, a, that's an act of love. I want, you to, I want you to sell everything you have, give to the poor, act, act, act in love. And, and I want you, if you really want to be perfect, follow me. If you want to be complete, if you want to feel like you're not lacking anything, follow me. Following is the key to perfection. Following and pursuing is the key to sta staying with God, by God, and, and having the things of God. Amen? Look, look at Psalm 23. Psalm 23, very first verse. The Lord is what? So literally you're saying the Lord is the one I follow. I shall not lack. Now, if you have lack, does that make this verse not true? Or are you not following? Right? Because that's what you're saying. If, if the Lord's your shepherd, that's who you're following. If he's your shepherd, you're doing, you're going where he says, all, and I will say blindly. Why? Because you trust him completely. And, and to completely trust somebody, you're not going to be worried about anything else. Why? Because you trust who you're following. If we trusted God, we would never look at other options. Now, now don't get me wrong. Uh, when, I was, when, when I was in business years and years and years ago, and it wasn't going well. You know, I was, talk, I was asking God about this, and he said, he said, you got distracted a whole bunch, but you never quit. That's a good thing. You know, because we all get distracted. We're all human. And that's what the devil wants. He wants to distract you. If he can distract you and pull you away, then, then you're, no, you're no longer pressing forward. You're never, no longer following God. You're, you've gone astray. Right? <laughs> but... If you didn't quit, you'll catch yourself and you'll come right back. Amen? When, when you quit, you, you, quitters whine and blame. Right? Why? They're discouraged. What's the next thing? Whine and blame. I don't know why God's not helping me. I have never done anything wrong. I read my chapters. Came to church. I've asked him hundreds of times and he ain't helping me. You've quit. You, you've now officially quit. It's when you start talking like a quitter that you're a quitter. Amen? When you start having the, the uh, symptoms of quitter, <laughs> catch yourself. You know, the one thing I knew, first, first thing I knew is I couldn't get myself out of it. Right? So that took one giant thing away. Why? Because can't look to yourself. Because there was no way I was getting me out of it. And my family wasn't getting me out of it because they were broke like me. Right? Let's put it this way. They didn't have enough money to finance me. Let's put it that way. Right? So I took all that out of the way. And, and then when, when I got past that, no matter what happened... I might start questioning in my mind, but my heart knew, follow God, just, just stay on it. He, you, you, you can, he won't fail. And, and, and I'd go and, and I lived in the Psalms. Why? Because there's so many Psalms about him being, he sustains you, he's your strength, he, he's your strong tower. You know, and you need that. That's called not quitting. That's called pressing and following. You know, people say, why do I got to be in the word all the time? That's what followers do. They listen to the word. They, they look to the word. It's not just something they're reading. It's the answer to their question. Right. Amen? And, and that, that's what followers do. And they press. And, and they're looking. Why? Because we know what God's got for us, but we still have to attain it. Amen? I had no doubt that God wanted me to come through that. How many in here has ever been sick? Did, did you know God wanted you well? Yeah. Right. So there, there alone is your reason to never quit. Why? Because God wants you well. And if he's for you, then who can be against you? The worst person against you is you at that point. Right? We become our own worst enemy when we begin to speak wrong. But we have the ability. What? He gave us not the spirit of timidity 
not the drawback spirit. He gave us the press forward spirit, the spirit of power and the spirit of love and the sound mind. He gave us the ability, no matter what's going on around us, to look at it and say, my God's bigger and he loves me. My God's greater and I know him. He'll bring me through. I'm not going to get off this course. Yeah, I looked over here and I looked over here, but I'm coming back here. Amen. And that, that's what Paul's saying in Timothy. He's saying, stir yourself up. Remember, remember to stir yourself up because the gift of God that's in you is greater than what's going on. It's, it's the spirit of power. It's the spirit of love. And it's a sound mind. You don't have to quit. You don't have to draw back. You don't have to give up. Amen? Amen. And, and, and the other thing he's saying, he's saying, remember. Why is he saying that? Because we forget. We forget. We, for, we forget that God brought us through here and here and he brought us over and he, he took care of us and he sustained us. And, and we forget and you know, the devil, he, he's like, he's like a termite. He, he, he is, you, you know, I, I was in the, I was in the bug killing business for just a short time <laughs> because I wasn't following God and I quit a job I shouldn't have quit. So somebody my size got to crawl under houses. <laughs> Many times I got to be stuck under houses, <clears throat> but I did this for a while. And, and what, you, what you learn about termites is that you don't kill them. Termites, you don't, you, if, if, the, if the actual um, bug spray or whatever, the, the, the chemical hits them, it'll kill them. But it's not designed to hit them. It's designed to make the ground unlivable. Because they have to have ground to live in. They have to have moisture. And so what it does is it takes the ability of the ground away for them to live in it. So well, you know what they do? They move to your neighbor's house. That's, a, that's what they do. If, if you go in a neighborhood and one, one person has termites, then there's a good chance several of them are going to get them. Because why? Because they're going to move. If you treat, they're going to move. They, what are, they're trying to find the next moisture. What's the devil do? If, if you don't quit, he'll go away from you for a while. But do you know that that chemical doesn't last forever? And when it wears out, the termite can come back. The devil, that's why God says remember, because the devil's not going to quit. The world's not going to quit being bad, right? There, there's not, stupid's not going to quit happening, right? There's only one cure for stupid, and it's love. And if you don't know Jesus, you don't have that. So there is no cure for you. Now, I had a lot of stupid, and I'm thankful that I got the cure, Every now and then, the symptoms try to sneak back out. <laughs> Anybody ever ha else have the symptoms of stupidity try to slip back out? Try to trust yourself and do it your own way? Huh? Yeah. And you get mad at people because I can. They're just wrong, doggone it. No. Love will cure all those things. Love cures anything that would be, you would be afraid of. It cures anything that will try to come after you. Because why? Because you will start loving others and you'll receive the love of God. And there's no weapon against that. There's no weapon against that. When we start reacting in love, and that's what he's saying. He said, stir yourself up because you have the spirit of power. My power, my love. In a sound mind. He said, I, when, when, when you come to a situation and you could judge, sure, do it in love. Judge in love. Look at everything in love and then use that power. Amen? Because, because when we stir ourselves up, we can walk in these ways. But when we're not stirred up, we, we get too much of Dave on top. Right? And you got to get through the Dave before you can get to the love. Dave should never be on top of love, right? Because love is first. And anytime it goes lower than first, then we make mistakes. Amen? And so God says, stir yourself up. R remember in, in Revelation, uh, the church at Ephesus. And he said, he said, you guys have done 
good here and, and, and you've not quit. He said, he said, you've labored for my name's sake and you've not fainted. He said, well, that, that's what we were talking about a little earlier. It took me seven years, but I didn't quit. Thank God. If I'd have quit, it had all been a waste. But because I didn't quit, it gave God that day where, where I could receive and, and do what He said. And, and that's what He was saying to the church. But He said, but the one thing I've got against you is you've left. In other words, you quit following your first love. You, uh, one, one of the words Paul uses, apprehended, and, and what that word means is laid hold of. You let, you, you let go of, you let go of your first love. Now, now a lot of those things you could say, what do you mean? Well, they, either they quit, they, they didn't quit doing things, but they quit doing them because they love God. They quit doing them because it was, it was, a, it was an honor. They started doing them for the wrong reason. It doesn't seem like They've, done, they've quit doing anything, all their stuff because he said you, you're patient and you've borne with people and, and, and you've, and you've uh, for my name's sake, you've labored. You haven't quit working. But then he said, but you need to go back to your first work. What's he saying? Something else got in between me and you. And I need you to go back to that first work. I need you to remember why you, why you volunteered. Right? I need, I need you to remember why you helped those people. Not, not, not that you helped those people, why you helped those people. You know, too many people remember that they helped them. Right? You know, when people need something, they remember every good thing they've ever done. I need this, can you? I did this, 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 and this for you. They'll start mentioning. And, and so really, they didn't do anything for you. They were trading with you. They were doing good so that someday when bad was happening to them, you would have to do good for them. Well, that's not how good works. God showed us how good works. He gave to us when we were his enemy and asked nothing in return. Amen? And, 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 and as we move forward and as we, as we press in, we don't lose that love. We don't allow that, that, that layer of flesh to get in between the gift of God, to get in between the goodness of God, to get in between the spirit, of, the spirit of power and love and sound mind. We don't allow things to stop us from walking, following God, following God, being in the company with him and pursuing what he has and who he is. Amen? Because when you pursue who he is, you're pursuing love. You're pursuing answers to questions. You're pursuing faith. You're pursuing hope. You're, you're always chasing after. We're not, we're not just, you know, and that, and that word following and pursuing is the same word in many cases. Amen? Look at, the, look at Philippians. We were talking about Paul. Let's talk more about him. Philippians 3. Philippians 3.12. He says, not as though I've already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after. Again, you see perfect and follow in the same verse. You know, Jesus told the, the young ruler that if you want to be perfect, follow. Because everything he told him to do, if he'd have done them, he'd have been following. Right? So it's not like he would have had to do those and then follow. If he'd have done those, he'd have been following. Amen? And so when God gives us the first step, take it and you're already following. See, but, but what he couldn't do was take the first step. And, and sometimes that's your hardest step. Because how many know if you can get your foot in the water and get over that cold, <laughs> cold water, then, then maybe you can do the whole thing. But... But sometimes if you'll get that first step in, that gets you to the place where, oh, wait, this is easy. Yeah, this is what I should have been doing all the time. And all I had to do is take a step. But if you never take a step, you'll never know that. You, you'll end up like him, sad, 
and discouraged, right? So obviously his great wealth wasn't helping him. Why? Because he was sad and discouraged when, he, when Jesus left. Because the money's not going to make him happy. And he wanted to know what he lacked. But Paul said, not that I've already attained or, were, or already per, made perfect, but I follow after, and that word means to pursue. And literally he's saying, I follow with the intent of catching. I'm not just following. You know, like... I could be out on the road right now and you could be behind me, but you're not following me. You're not even going where I'm going. You just happen to be on the same road, okay. right? But if we were going the same place and you didn't know how to get there, you'd be following me, right? right? But if you were a policeman and I was speeding, you'd be pursuing me, <laughs> right? That, see, there's all forms of following. He's still following me, but he's following me with the intent to catch me. <laughs> well, on the good side of that, Paul says, follow after with the intent of catching, getting hold of, laying hold of the things of God, attaining and apprehending the goodness, the, 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 the good things of God. Amen? Amen. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, he's saying follow me. He said, I, I haven't attained it yet. I've not been made perfect, but, but I'm following after. If that I may apprehend, again, that means to lay hold, that I may lay hold of that which he laid hold of for me. So that I may, get, that I may grasp and get a hold of what all he's done for me, that he's able to call me a son of God. A, 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 a king and a priest that he that I can attain to this high calling how am I going to attain to this high calling I'm going to pursue him and find out what what he says about me I'm going to pursue him for my health I'm going to pursue him for my finances I'm going to pursue him for my hope for my peace for my joy I'm going to pursue him and apprehend what he got for me I'm going to apprehend that which was apprehended. Jesus apprehended the goodness of God back for us. And Paul said, I'm going to get that. And then he said, I'm going to press. Press, and it's the same word for follow and pursue. I press in. What's he saying? I'm following after and I'm pressing in. I'm pursuing and I'm pursuing. What am I pursuing? I'm pursuing that mark. I'm pursuing everything he did that brought me to the place I'm at so that I can go over and over. And people say, well, what if he attains it? You'll never attain it because there's more. That's why Jesus said, when, when, the, when the rich young ruler said, what do I lack? You're always going to lack something because there's always more. But you won't lack it long if you keep looking for God. The, the, the only way you'll lack it is the same way he lacked it. He was unable to follow. So we got to get rid of those things that cause us not to follow. The distractions. Amen? The, the things that push us away. The things that cause us to draw back. Amen? Well, what's it say in James? Look at James 1. Here's one of the things that cause you to draw back. I might even have James 1 in here. I don't know. I read it, but I don't know that I wrote it. Maybe not. Yeah, James 1, 14. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away. Well, when is the sheep in the most danger? When they're drawn away. You know, sheep are built to follow. If they get distracted and they go somewhere else, like Mrs. Moore said, they're in danger. Their next name is lunch. Right? It's a, good, it's a good chance their name is lunch. If they get distracted, what are they doing? They're getting tempted by something else. See, the devil's not stupid. He's not, he's not going to try and draw you away with ugly things because you ain't going there. Right? I mean, that's why Kim married me, put this pretty right in front of her. I mean, what could she do? Right? Upgrade city. 
Premium package, that's it. The devil is going to entice you by your own desire. He, he's going to try and entice you with things you would want, you would desire, you would covet. You would, and, and when he does, when, he can, when you're drawn away by that, then you're no longer following. And when you're no longer following, you're in danger of being astray. You're in danger of sinning now. Why? Because you're not following. See, the devil can't get you to sin when you're following. He can't get you to mess up when you're following. He can't get, when you're stirred up. Remember when you were stirred up? 30 seconds ago. Right? Everybody's stirred up, right? Remember when you woke up thinking about what you could do for God and, and thought about it all day and went to bed thinking the same thing? Everybody in here had those days, and you still have them. But, but there's no reason for those to stop. Because any time you take outside of following God, and people say, oh, you mean i got to read the Bible? No, you don't have to read the Bible. Jesus is with you. He's in your heart. You, you take him. And you know, we, we, we take for granted that he's in the car with you. He's in the house with you. He's in the shower with you. He, when you're singing in the shower, he's listening. Better sing some better songs. But, but don't take for granted. He's right there with you. The presence of God is there. And, and He's in us. And, and so we don't have to be drawn away because He's right there. And, 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 and if, we, if we'll look to Him in every way, we won't get drawn away. People say, well, you just can't follow God all the time. That's what we, He said we could. He said, my sheep know my voice, and another they won't follow. So, so the things that are distracting you aren't another voice. They're another thing, right? They're offense, <laughs> right? Well, I just don't like the way they've treated me. I've volunteered in this position for nigh on 10 years now, and they still don't, don't acknowledge how good a job I'm doing. Who do you need to make happier than God? Right? Because God's happy. Why? Because you're doing it for the right reason. Now you've left your first love. The reason you started doing it in the first place. That was your first love. And when, when you started doing it that way, and that's what he said, he said, go back to that. He said, repent. What's he saying? Turn around. Don't just turn around, but change. Turn around and change because what you're doing now ain't going to work. You need to turn around and you need to change. You need to stir yourself up. You need to remember who I am. You need to remember who I made you to be. And you need to begin to follow. You need to begin to pursue. Amen. You know, people, when, when we get believing for healing and it doesn't happen in our time frame. Well, God, I've been asking you for six months now, and I still feel the same way I felt six months ago. You were six months closer than you were after you said that sentence. That sentence drew you back to a place <laughs> where you were before. Good news is you can repent and come back. Right? There's no reason to quit on God because he's never failed. If you were waiting on water to come out of a well and it had never failed you before, you'd pump until water came. Right? If you ordered Taco Bell and went to the window, even, no matter how slow they were, you'd wait for your tacos. That's right. I do. <laughs> I'll wait for your tacos too. <laughs> if somebody gets impatient and drives off, say, oh, give me theirs. But we, we, it, we got to be to that place where quitting is not something we do. But the only way you'll get to that place is by constantly following the good shepherd, the one that says, you'll not lack. If you follow me, you'll not lack. And better yet, if you follow me and pursue me, goodness and mercy will pursue you. So, so, you're, so you're following God and the goodness of God is following you, right? 
You're being pursued by what you pursue. Let it eat you up. Let it take over and just eat you up. Let all that goodness pursue you and overtake you and come on you and live in it. Walk in it. Why? Because as long as you're following Him, but the minute you get over here, goodness and mercy stay there. So not only are you not following Him, goodness and mercy are still here. You're over here. Amen? Good news, it's just a distraction. It's just a distraction. The devil's going to come back, but he's going to leave. If, if you will keep resisting him, and one, the one way you resist him is keep following. Keep looking at God. Keep looking to God. Stay close to the Father. Don't let, don't let something distract you or, or cause you uh, to be unhappy with God or, or be offended with your brother. Or don't, don't, call, don't let those things come in. Those are, those are distractions to stray sheep. And, and that's how you get out on your own. And when you get out on your own, you can't get goodness and mercy helping you out. Because you're not following the good shepherd. Amen? It says, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away. He's drawn away what? Of his own lust. Right? It doesn't say he's putting something in front of you that you couldn't resist. He said, this was yours. <laughs> right? That's, that's why you want to watch what we say. Because the devil can only use what you say against you. Right? I never say I'm sick. I don't care how bad I feel. People say, well, you feel bad, you're sick. No, I'm not. I'm not sick if I don't say I'm sick. Those are symptoms of sickness that I refuse. Amen? I don't care if I go to the doctor to get medication. He says, are you sick? I said, no, I got symptoms, though. You got something to treat them? I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to call myself sick. I'm not going to call myself broke. I'm not going to call myself in turmoil or in, at war or I'm not going to call myself anything the devil would like me to call myself. Why? Because I am pressing forward to attain the high calling, to reach the mark of the high calling, to reach what God called me. God, he's who called me healed. He's who called me wealthy. He's who called me peaceful. He's who called me full of joy. He's who gives me strength. He's who I'm following. He's who I'm pressing in for. I'm not looking for another answer. I have the best answer. Amen? And we don't have to, to, to lower ourselves. And people say, well, if you're sick, just say you're sick. No! That's the devil trying to get somebody to help you help him. Amen? Amen? If you don't feel good, you don't feel good. I didn't say, oh, I feel good. See, that's not, <laughs> that's not faith, right? I didn't say I would tell you I'm not sick. I said I would not call myself sick. I would tell you I've got some symptoms that I'm fighting. I'm catching a healing. I'm a little busy right now catching a healing. Amen? I, I'm putting myself in every place I can to get, to, to get infected with it. I, I put myself in, in Psalm 107. I, all right? I put myself in 1 Peter 2.24. I'm getting infected with healing right now. And, and, and that's, that's what you want to start saying. You don't want to, you don't want to bow down and, and quit following God's word to, to, to let the world know how you feel. Amen? Because you'd much rather catch a healing than a cold, right? Right? You'd much rather catch a healing than the flu. Amen? <laughs> and, and, and if you're in financial trouble, I'm coming over. All right? I'm coming out. How are you doing? So it looks like you don't have enough. I'll have more than enough. Yeah. I mean, you don't, don't have to say I'm broke. You don't have to say, because what, what are you literally saying? You're saying, the Lord's not taking care of me. My good shepherd's not so good. My good shepherd is so good. And because of him, I shall not lack. I shall not run short. I will follow him. Why? Because he's my shepherd. That's what I'm designed to do. Amen? 
when I hear his voice and he turns left, I'm going left. Amen. And I trust him never to run me over a cliff, always to bring me into the greenest pastures by the best river where, where, the, where, the, where the grass tastes the best and where there's no wolves and where there's no lions and bears. Amen. Oh, my. I'm trusting God. And that, that's what you do. You trust God. That's why you follow him. You won't follow someone you don't trust. I remember my mom when she was actually right, right after I was born. Her mom had a sickness and it was in her mind. And her mom took her life and the life of her younger brother and sister. And the church at that time that did the funeral said, well, this is what happened. This must be God's will. And my mom at that moment said, well, then I'll never trust him with my kids. And she didn't serve him for several years. Thank God. God's merciful. Gave her a dream. And she made a choice. She said, not only am I going to serve him, I will only serve him with everything that I am the rest of the days of my life. And she only did. Amen. But that's what the devil's trying to get, do. He wants be, either by religion or our own stupidity to talk us into not trusting God. Because you won't follow what you don't trust. Amen. You'll, you'll look for your own way out. You'll look for your own desire. You'll, you'll find a better way. You'll get more credit cards. You'll, you'll, you'll look for the, you know, you, there's people doing things that are crazy to get well. <laughs> I'm not going to say what. I'm just going to say they're crazy. Because unless God tells you to do them, they're not going to work. If God told you to do them, more power to you. You should come back healed. Why? Because you're following God. And God does use the medical field. We've got examples of that all over this church. And just like Brother Moore said, we should be praying for them to come out with more stuff. Amen? Because there is no such thing as healing that doesn't come from God. That's right. No such thing as healing that doesn't come from God. People can give glory to whoever they want, but it came from God. Amen. If somebody got the knowledge for something that heals, they got it from God. Why? Because he's the healer. There is no other. There's no other. There's no such thing as healing outside of God. Amen? He's a good God. Doing good things. Do we ever get out of James? No, because we're not going to be drawn away or enticed. Right? We're not going to be enticed. I'm not going to be enticed by the world to do what it wants. Right? I'm, I'm going to stick with God. Because the very next verse says, don't err. Well, what's that? Well, you know what that means? Don't err. Don't be drawn away. What's he saying? Don't be drawn away. Don't, don't be given to the devil's enticements. And be drawn away because every good and perfect gift, everything you're looking for, everything you'll ever need, everything you'll ever want, all your wildest desires are in him, are in him. And there's no variableness. What? He's not changing personalities, qualities, and he's not changing direction. He's worthy to be followed. The, the highest quality of a good leader is they're worthy to be followed. That, that is the number one qualification of a good leader. Jesus was worthy to be followed. When he came up and said, follow me, what'd they do? Boom. Why? Because he was worthy to be followed. They didn't even know him, but they, man, he's just, he's got it. And then later, what, in John 6, everybody else quit following him. He said, you're going to quit following me too? No, no, no. Oh, no. We don't understand everything you said either. But you got the words of life. What are they saying? We're not quitting. We're not quitting. We don't know everything, but we're pressing forward. We're going to attain. Amen? And we're not going to quit. We're not going to give up. Yeah, we messed up over here. We did something wrong over here. You know, I was looking at David and Bathsheba. Did you know right before that happened, he was doing good stuff? Did you know right after that happened, he was doing good stuff? He didn't leave in the past. 
and he didn't let the past affect his future. Amen? If you stop following, come right back. With God, there's forgiveness. In fact, it says plenteous forgiveness. In other words, more of the forgiveness than you'll ever need is with God. Glory to God. And that's what we're looking for. Amen? And David, he, he knew he did wrong, and, and it grieved him. But, you know, even Paul, go back to Philippians. Maybe we'll close with that. Did I have it in here? Yeah, Philippians. David was the same way. He, he, he wasn't looking at behind. He was reaching forward. Right? Even after, if we mess up, if, if, we, if we fall away, if we, if we, if we get distracted or, or, we, or we go astray, come back. Well, what's it said? We've returned to the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. Return to the shepherd. He's the good shepherd. There's no reason. There's, if you stop trusting him for one minute, stop that. Come right back. He's completely trustworthy. He's the only thing in the universe that's never failed. If he did, we wouldn't be here right now. Because it'd just all explode. Amen? Yeah, in uh, Philippians 3.13, it says, Brethren, not, I, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, for, forgetting those things which are behind. You know, there's two things that are behind you, your bad works and your good works. Don't claim either one of them to get your, to get your way. Neither one of them, right? <laughs> if you go to God and say, well, God, look what I've done. He said, you should forget that. You should be reaching forward. Did you do that so you could tell me what you did? Right? I mean, Paul had some good stuff. Think about who just wrote this. He had some really bad stuff, and he had some awesome things that he did. I mean, if anybody could have said, God, I've went everywhere you said. I've been beaten. I've been burned. I've been put in jail. I, what, what more could I do for you, God? But he wasn't looking at any of that to press forward. He said, I am reaching forward. I'm looking forward to the things of God so that I might attain. Amen? Well, he says, he said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth. This is, this is following. This is fo going forth. If you're looking behind, you're no longer following because he's going that way. If, you, if, you're, if you're reaching behind, you're, you're getting further away from God. God. God's forward. And that's what we've got to remember. It, it doesn't matter the good or bad thing that happened here. You can remember the testimony and you can rejoice over the goodness of God, but you, but you press forward. It, it's not the excuse for getting healed. Right? Well, Lord, look what I did last week. Shouldn't I be healed? And, you know, in our minds, we think that way. I, I don't know if you guys are better than me or not, but I look at some people and I see they're sick and I'm like, how could they be sick? You know, and, and then you look at other people and you say, they should be sick. <laughs> and both are wrong. Both are completely and horribly outside of love and wrong. And, and I hope you guys have never done that, but I have. I've looked at people and I said, how is it possible that that person's sick? They, they're such a good person. And that's not the qualification for healing. The only qualification for healing is trusting God who said you're healed. Amen? And, and, and so many times we look at other people and say they should be sick. That's judgment. They should be no sicker than you. Right? The same sin sending them to hell was the same sin that was sending you to hell. You just got some Jesus before they did. What you should say is, they need Jesus. How can I get Jesus to them? That's how you attain. That's how you apprehend. Amen? He said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things that are before, I press, I pursue, I run with the intention of attaining 
with the intention of attaining towards the mark of the, high, of the prize, of the high calling. What's he saying? So there's, there's a mark there that where Jesus said, I'm healed, where Jesus said, I'm saved, where Jesus said, you're a king and a priest, where Jesus said, this is who you're my son, and where Jesus called you everything, and you're trying to attain to that. Grab hold of how he could call you that and call yourself that. Because that's who you are. You're the healed of the Lord. Right? You're, you're, you're so full of peace that there ain't no way understanding could ever understand it. Amen? And you got joy that keeps you strong every day. People don't understand. How can you smile? You know, after my mom came back to God, I do not remember a day she wasn't happy. I don't, I do, and, I, and I talked to her almost there. She was my best friend, outside of my best friend. On this earth, I talked to her every day. And I never, no matter what was going on, she was happy. Why? Because she knew God. No, nothing else compared to the knowledge. Rick knew her. Did you ever remember see her unhappy? Rick? Nothing compared. And nothing should compare to us. We should stir ourselves up tonight, tomorrow, every day. Stir ourselves up, reminding ourselves of that high calling that he's given us. He's given every person in here a high call. It's not just a call to do, it's a call to be. Amen? Yes, it's a call to do. And Paul, of course, went on and did because of who he be. And the more we know who we be, the more we'll do. Amen? But we got to follow on. We got to follow hard. We got to pursue it with, with intentions of grabbing hold of and saying, you know what? I don't know how in the world this sickness could be in my body because I'm so healed. The healed people call me healed. The devil can't get one over. No weapon formed against me can prosper. I'm not taking this. Amen? Amen. And we live in that goodness. We walk in that goodness. We follow that goodness. And then that goodness that we're following is chasing us from behind. So we run into it up front of us because we're pursuing it so hard. And it backs into us as we go. We're a, we are a goodness sandwich. We're the filling. We're the meat in a goodness sandwich. What could be better than that? We're meat and cheese. Right in the middle of a goodness sandwich. Lord just gave me that. I'm going to wake up. You're thinking, I'm the meat and cheese in a goodness sandwich. And I don't have to have lettuce and tomato in there. But I will because I like it in my goodness sandwich. Glory to God. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You got a song? Sing one for us. I have decided to follow Jesus. We're not just deciding to come to church, right? Right? Not just deciding to tell people we're Christians. We're deciding to act like it. Right? Not, not let me rephrase that. We're not going to act like it. We're going to be like it. Actors act. We're not going to act. It's just going to come out of us because it's who we are. Amen? If you follow goodness and goodness behind you, you're bound to start doing and living goodness. And you won't miss buying dinner. <laughs> Glory to God. He's got a good plan for us. He's, he's got a good way. And His way is perfect. So why not follow His way? Amen? In His way, you're healed. In His way, you're saved and on your way to heaven and living an eternal, everlasting life right now. Right now. There's nothing that could happen to a saved person that could be bad. 
say, well, what if you die? <laughs> Upgrade. You talk about premium package, you're getting ready to see the premium package. But if we're following God, that won't happen early. We'll make our full course. Why? Because you're following God. And in His course, there's a plan. Amen? I mean, we read about Moses today. He told Moses he was going to not get over, not see the, or get to the land, but he was going to, and Moses lived to be 120 years old. His eyesight was not abated, right? And he was strong enough to climb a mountain. Now, I'm going to have to go work out. So when I see a mountain, I think car, four-wheeler. Moses just walked right up that thing at 120 and then went home. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to follow on. I'm going to pursue with all my heart and I'm going to pursue with you. We're going to pursue him together. Glory to God. Glory to God. Altar care workers, come forward. If you're in here tonight, Maybe you got a hold of something you hadn't got. You need somebody to shout with you. Sometimes you get something in you. You need a shout. These people shout with you. But you, maybe you need prayer for something else. Maybe you got something going on in your life. You need somebody to pray with you. They'll pray with you. If you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, they can pray with you. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. They are here to serve. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sunday morning, 9 o'clock here, 10 o'clock in Sarasota. It's going to be good always good right if it hadn't been good that probably that was Jesus saying you lack one thing <laughs> don't lack it anymore and then it'll be good glory to God thank you Lord it will be good and we'll all be here together to enjoy it and keep pursuing the goodness of God amen amen they're gonna sing we'll be dismissed they do love y'all <laughs>